Well, hello, Roger. <laughs> I'm Jerry, Jerry Bell. You've got me here for some reason or other, which will become more evident as the day progresses, I guess. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we've got the um, panoramas here. Of um, and you... that's Mrs. Shear's house again, which is that one. It's been painted by the looks of it. How can we tell? Probably the tank uh, and the little old fireplace here. Remember the old fireplace is just a poke out of the wall? Oh. That's that. Little window. Bit of a... But that's been closed um, in. Yeah, there. Yeah. But he's still there, the fellow who owns that. Good old guy. She was a German, the lady was in it, Mrs. Shear. And she had uh, escaped from the Russians and the Germans during the Second World War. A very wise woman. One of the founders of the Croquet Club of Caloundra, it turns out. And she was a wonderful woman because when I was married and lived a couple of doors this way, she used to come and talk to my wife. They were good friends. And round about late in the afternoon, she'd come up and say, it's drinkies time, because she used to love her sherry. <laughs> and this, and listen, Mrs. Shear would drink their sherry. I'd probably arrive home after that was all over. But she was a nice lady. The allotments there are very deep, eh? So your, your place wasn't built at that stage? No, not, at, not in 48 by the looks. I purchased it in about 1960 and to help pay for it I took on a lot of surveying out in the northwest of Queensland which helped me pay for the house. I, I was a fellow, when I got married I already had a house and uh, this came to a house I already owned. And I used to share the house with my mother, who I used to look yeah, after. She ended up um, remarrying after I got married. They built a house on a vacant block and head down the bottom. Which was pretty close for a wife to have her mother in law, and, but it was an uphill walk, so that was <laughs> probably a bit pleasing. <laughs> Harold Dickens, I think, used to live here. You go inside and have a look. Church. They, were, they were flats there. I think the church might have purchased them. And Jim Settle built on that one there. Frank Nickman used to live there, I think it was. No, there's Frank's place there. Frank Nickman, who became the, the Premier of Queensland. Was that, was, was that his retirement home? Well, it's where he lived when we were here. And uh, he was a bachelor by then, like he was single. His a lady he used to talk with was down the street. Another fellow who lived in that street just down below us, not sure which one, was Alan Parry, the solicitor. And uh, we used to, Liz used to watch out the window and the, and the school kids, who were probably celebrating the high school today, used to have a great time down in the garage that Parry's had down the bottom of the street. We never knew what went on in the garage, but it wasn't our business anyway. That's not joined very well there. I think this should be this way, but it should be back here. Yes, there's a bit of a glitch. Mm. Oh gosh, isn't this an interesting one? Look at that. That's the old drainage plan from 66, mm. so that That's should the have... That's the council old drainage sewerage plan, yeah. Plan. And that way, there's, there's the lighthouse. <laughs> so this, that would have... Oh yeah, we're in that one. Um, we were five down, one, two, three, four. I'm not quite. Don't know what the story is there. We were number 13, Canberra Terrace, when I was around. Um, Trying to work out which is Shears House, and I think that one's probably Shears there. Which means this flat roofed one might have been us. We'll have a look at that plan again here. A lot of these have changed. They added to them and painted them and made them look a bit different, but the roof shape is generally what gives them away, isn't it? Mm. Good old Anglican church over here. <laughs> yeah, and that's it. Um, that's there. it again. Yeah, looking different in white. Yeah. Looks like white must have been the predominant colour. Yeah, because mm. these have all changed. They've all changed to, to white. white. Might have been a lot cooler or something, eh? And bitumen's gone in between then and then. I remember when the curb and channeling came in. I think it was before we left this street. We suffered a lot of cyclonic damage when we were there. And uh, it was quite a lot of times we spent sleeping under the kitchen table uh, because the cyclones were very boisterous and we had uh, hopper windows and they'd blow them open. And I'll tell you what, you had one hell of a job to try and close one if the wind was blowing. 
So, from what um, years were you in Canberra Terrace? Probably, we, I owned that house probably from about 1960 to about 72 or 3. Mm. Mm. Fair while. What's that? That's not as long as I thought it was. It sounded like an eternity at the time. I know I was married there and I remember I got news of the birth of my eldest son. Took the phone call in Canberra Terrace. Liz had been in labour a couple of days. And they sent me home because we wondered if things were going to happen. And then I got the call. Mr Bell, you have a son with great big hands and great big feet. <laughs> <laughs> he was That's a big boy. He's <laughs> around Calandra now. Six foot tall, which is a lot taller than me. And those hands have been put to good use because he's a physiotherapist. There you go. That's, that's sidelining onto my own history. Um, I don't know what else I can say about that. We should be able to go down to the Hotel Calandra, shouldn't we? If the photo's long enough. There's the Strand Theatre. Many a happy day. There's Frizzo's building. That was built about 1956. Uh, that's my that's first Denver. office used to be there. This little house in Dingle had a little dairy out the back. Oh, did it? Yeah. They had goats, I think. Mm -hmm. That's interesting and you say that. there was a skating rink somewhere there too. The skating rink used to be come in later. up Dingle Avenue. That looks like... It's on that, that could on have the been drainage Evans, plans. Evans bakery there. Oh, the drainage plan might be the one to look at, eh? Have a look. Yeah, it's got the skating rink marked there. There it is there. That's where that Centrelink building is now, all of that. That's the post office. And uh, I was talking to our friend out there before about... George Phillips, well, his son uh, was the architect that made sure that we got a decent post office in Caloundra, because he used to visit quite often. Mm. He was a very good friend of the uh, people who lived over there. There it is, eh? One of these houses is still here. Yes, I think probably even this. I'm not sure the footprint Might be a couple of them. A couple, couple of them are still there, city. I think. What more have we got? This is Bombala Terrace there. Here's our Canberra Terrace there again. Upper Gay. <laughs> Upper this? Gay Terrace there still seems to be a, That's a, it there. a few yeah. of the um, original houses. Yes, there was a few. I remember when they put the speed bump in up the, towards the top of the hill in Upper Gay Terrace with a stop sign on it. That happened when I was in the council during the 70s and the reason for that was that the Hoons used to love whipping up Upper Gay Terrace and zooming down the other side and it made a lot of danger with the intersection with Arthur Street. So the council thought, well stop this, we'll put an actual stop sign so it's illegal for them to go over the top of the hill at that speed. Because that's the uh, old light keeper's cottage down that they slid yeah, down the hill, yeah, which is in the forties. The one, one with the white roof. White. Yeah, that's one of the best spots in Calandra. And they've just yeah slipped it down there when they built this one. Mm, it's a very big long allotment. I remember once it belonged to a fellow who lived in New Guinea, who I met, and uh, I think I met him through the Lions Club or something. But um, that, that's the one directly below. Yeah. The light keeper's cottage is the one on Upper Gay Terrace. That's oh, that's yeah. right, yeah. yeah. But, but I'd heard that's there was good. somebody from New Zealand that built that house and used a lot of New Guinea timbers, I was told. Could have. I thought this one was owned by the New Guinea, that flat roof one we're looking at, but that looks like it's a different building to what I remember. It's been modified a bit recently. What about the chemist? I think he used to live there for a while. Like with him, perhaps? Mike no, Whitten had a know. very big house on the top of the hill and he had a lot of kids. Um, anyway, I can't really say from here, I'd have to go around the front, you know. But um, I'm not telling you much more, am I? I love it here, don't you? Look at this, look at that thing, eh? Prime real estate of Caloundra yes. sitting there, hardly occupied. <laughs> My gosh, it's top real estate today. That's the well, idea changed, there now. Changed pretty quickly, didn't it? Didn't that was, was that, over ten years. Ten years, yeah. One hell of a lot happened. There's Golden Beach happening. Over there, there's nothing. Oh, Golden, yeah, Golden Beach. Beach have been built up. Mm, it had. Roy Hinge will own every stick of it from Gregory Street south 
except the entrance to Bell's Creek, which was owned by a fellow called Tor Jensen. A, a, I think he was a Norwegian or a Swede, but he was a very leading surveyor in Brisbane. Yeah, that, but that was portion 27 in there. That's Pelican Waters. I'm running my hand on it. That's mm. it. <laughs> mm. And up to down here, they found that hard to sell originally. I used to get the stories from Roy Hensel. He bought a few allotments in there to get it moving. They had a big family, and Ted Hume was the. He had a transport business and earth moving. And he, his daughter married uh, McAllister, and McAllister's used to live there. And Mrs. McAllister used to sell tickets at the Strand Theatre way over here when she was a younger girl. And also, she's the mother-in-law of the leading surveyor of mine, Gary Tronk. Here's the bowls club over here. Didn't exist. Can they date them, Jerry? Oh, a few of them, yeah. Good on you, mate. Masonic Lodge is just there, or was, and they sold that. And they got a similar thing to what Frank Nicklin did for the uh, Uniting Church. They've got a block over near the RSL. Yeah. They flogged that off its units now.